Now, before colonialism, we had traditional communities, again, tradition is always in quotes, living in so-called pre-industrial uh, and often insular conditions. Although some form of economic exchange may have occurred between these two worlds, uh, the interaction with and curiosity about the other was somewhat limited. This was a stage where the forms of settlements may have been an immediate reaction to the surrounding natural environment. So whether we're looking at a city like you know, Hyderabad, a city whose skyline was once shaped by the wind scoops um, that you can actually see here, it's almost as if uh, each house is like a person with an arm that is extended up in the air, trying to capture a bit of the cold air in a very hot, arid climate to bring it to the courtyards of these houses or whether it is uh, something like the traveler died dwellings of Luoyang in China, where escape from that same harsh weather actually went underground. Each of these pit houses, they are traveler died houses, uh, is actually the size of a tennis court. And it goes deep uh, in the ground, uh, anywhere between 6 meters to 11 meters. Uh, you can understand that, in a sense, uh, in many of these uh, situations, we're looking here at uh, an example that comes from uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, where concern for privacy generated windowless exteriors and inward-oriented courtyard houses. In all of these examples, we encounter environments that are supposedly in sync with the immediate needs of the indigenous population. Their settlement forms appear to have been shaped mainly by their basic shelter concerns and the absence, often, of alternative material. They built with what was there. They reflect, possibly, at a subconscious level, a match between the identity of the inhabitants and their limited access to resources. Again, this notion of limited access, this notion of constraint is very important in uh, the attempt to understand what really tradition means and the production of the built environment under this condition.